Welcome to this video. In this video, I'll be presenting part of my translation into English of one of the early works of the Polish logician Stanisław Leśniewski. The original title of the work in Polish was Podstawy Ogólnej Teorii Mnogości, and which I've translated into English as The Foundations of the General Theory of Aggregates. I'll just start off this video with some remarks on my translation. For those watching this who already have some familiarity with the Polish language, then you might notice an error on the title screen for this video. I'll just remark that the original text of Leśniewski, being written in around 1916, uses an older system of spelling in the original article. And I use this older system of spelling in this video. So for example, teori, the current spelling of the word with an I, appears as in the old spelling with a Y. And similarly, axiomat with a J, the current spelling, appears also with a Y, which is the old spelling. These differences in spellings don't make the least bit of difference to the work itself and don't affect the pronunciation of the words involved. I've deliberately translated the Polish word mnogosz as aggregate rather than set. This is for various reasons. Firstly, it's important to recognise that what's called a set in modern mathematics and logic is a very different kind of thing than what Leśniewski is dealing with in this work from 1916. Secondly though, I've also noticed in other works that the word set is often rendered into Polish as zbiór rather than mnogosch. Other possibilities which I ultimately decided against were manifold and multiplicity. Also the term class was not appropriate since the Polish word klasa appears from section 5 onwards. In Leśniewski's later work titled O Podstawach Matematyki, or On the Foundations of Mathematics, he uses the word zbiór rather than mnogosch. Occasionally it's difficult to determine whether something in Polish should be translated into English using the definite or indefinite article. Thus, klasa przedmiotów M can be translated as a class of M's or the class of M's. Usually the context settles the problem of which article to use, but there are a few occasions where I've just had to make a judgement call. It's possible that the problem could just be ignored and no article used in the English translation at all, since the use of articles is arguably logically superfluous, but then this would make the language quite unnatural and distracting. I haven't translated word for word. I've tried to use the language and sentence structure that I would expect to find in an equivalent work in English. Therefore, sometimes Leśniewski uses the active voice, which I've translated into the passive voice. For example, Leśniewski says, Używam wyrażenia ingredients przedmiotu perla oznaczenia, and so on, which would translate word for word as, I use the expression an ingredient of the object P to mean, and so on. But which I've translated as, the expression an ingredient of the object P is used to mean, and so on. There are other examples which I could mention where the word for word translation into English sounds cumbersome and unnatural, even though the Polish wording is perfectly natural, or at least it is to my ears. The word twierdzenie I've translated in two different ways depending on when and where it occurs. I've either translated twierdzenie as proposition when referring to the main results of the work which usually have accompanying proofs. In most other cases, such as at certain points in the proofs of what I've termed propositions, when the word twierdzenie occurs, I've translated it as statement. Leśniewski uses the word przedmiot, object, a lot throughout the work. This seems to be more to indicate the grammatical case of the objects being referred to more than anything, and they're usually unnecessary in the English translation. For example, there would be ambiguity in the sentence P1 jest częścią P, because it would be unclear whether what was being said was that P1 is a part of P, or if P1 is the part P. However, the sentence P1 jest częścią przedmiotu P is clear in its meaning, that P1 is a part of P. I've therefore avoided using the word object whenever I felt it unnecessary to use it. The word object is not defined in this work since it is a superfluous term and is not really a term of the system that Leśniewski presents. I'm not a professional translator and this is the first attempt that I've made at translating something that I've intended to make public in whole or in part. So I'm very aware that there will be people out there who are much better at translation than I am and who will know the tricks of the trade. Of course, I'd be very happy to receive any constructive feedback on how my translation might be improved upon. At the time of making this video, I've made an almost complete yet provisional translation of this work into English, and I'll be happy to provide anyone who is interested with a copy. All I'd ask in return is that you subscribe to my channel, 
hit the like button, and that you recommend my channel to other people, which, of course, I'll have to take your word on that. The translation is complete with regards to the propositions, definitions, axioms, and proofs. But at the time of making this video, the translation of the introduction, Pshed Mother, is not yet satisfactory. There's a certain paragraph of the introduction that I'm not satisfied that I've properly understood, and so I want to do some more additional research before I'm happy with my translation. If you'd like a copy of the translated version as it currently stands, then please let me know, otherwise it will remain amongst my various other notes and probably never see the light of day ever again. I can't guarantee 100% correctness of the translation, nor can I guarantee that the translation will be top quality. As the old saying goes, you get what you pay for. In this video, I'll simply be going through the propositions, definitions and axioms up to the end of section 8, and the rest of the sections will be covered in the sequel. I will not be going through the proofs in any real detail, though I may touch on the proofs from time to time. But I will be making some short remarks about some of the sections and brief explanations wherever appropriate of some of the more important propositions, definitions, etc. and how they might be interpreted. I've known of Leshnevsky's work for a few years, but have only recently managed to invest sufficient time learning about him and his work. And that's not counting the time taken to learn Polish to a level where I was actually able to understand his work in the first place. Therefore, this video and possibly any subsequent videos will to a certain extent track my own learning about Leshnevsky and his work, so additional videos will be made in future if necessary and as the need arises. Some of the propositions which Leshnevsky proves will often seem to be trivial in nature, and sometimes this is true. However, I think it's just Leshnevsky's style, which may be perceived by some as pedantic, to require a proper proof whenever this is possible. Sometimes what seems to be obvious can turn out to be anything but obvious. It's also the case that some of the trivial propositions are actually required in the proofs of later propositions, such as Proposition 5 in the proof of Proposition 10. And so, by insisting on proving propositions no matter how seemingly trivial, then it becomes much less probable that an invalid assumption is going to sneak its way into the proof of a proposition and thus invalidate the proof and potentially the work as a whole. Although I won't be going through the proofs, I will note that the proofs up to section 5 seem to follow quite a different style of presentation from the rest of the work. From section 5 onwards, the proofs are written out so that each statement is numbered or assigned a letter. But this doesn't happen in the earlier proofs for reasons that I'm not aware of. Nonetheless, this doesn't affect things in any substantial way. This work of Leshnevsky is in the public domain and can be downloaded from the internet. The website from which I downloaded the digital version of this work can be clearly seen at the bottom of most pages shown in this video. I'll also include a link in the description to this video. Section 1 Section 1 introduces the first two axioms which concern the undefined term part. Recall that object, though seemingly undefined, is not a true term in the system. Thus, part is the only true undefined term of the system. Part is shown to be a transitive relation. Section 2. This section introduces the term ingredient and some immediate propositions which follow from this definition. Section 3. Section 3 shows that ingredient is a transitive relation and a couple of propositions, 5 and 6, which seem very similar to proposition 4 are proved. Here we start to see more of the structure of objects in terms of their ingredients. Section 4. Here the term aggregate of M's is defined. M's are simply some objects that have the relation ingredient of to an object P, which is known as an aggregate of M's. This is not to suggest that every ingredient of the aggregate of M's is itself an M. We also see that there is an object called a class of M's, which is distinguished from an aggregate of M's by the fact that every object which is an M is an ingredient of a class of M's, instead of merely some of the M's, as in the case of an aggregate of M's. The two axioms in this section guarantee that every object can be considered as an ingredient of some class, and that classes of M's are unique. Thus we can refer to THE class of M's rather than A class of M's. The remark that I made in the introduction about whether to use the definite or indefinite article when translating a Polish sentence into English is particularly appropriate in relation to definition 3. In definition 3, it seems to be that we're not to assume that the class of M's are unique, and hence I refer to a class of M's. However, axiom 4 guarantees the uniqueness, 
which justifies my transition from using the indefinite article to the definite article. Section 5. Some short remarks concerning the propositions from Section 5 are as follows. In Proposition 8, we have that P can unconditionally be considered as the class of its ingredients. However, for Proposition 9, we have the condition that if some object is a part of P, then P can be considered as the class of its parts. Note that we cannot guarantee the existence of a part of an object. An object will always have an ingredient, namely itself, but may not have any parts. Section 6 Section 6 gives a name to the relation of the m's in an aggregate of m's to the aggregate. An object P can be considered as the class of x's for different meanings of x, but nevertheless the object P is always the same object. Therefore, notice that in definition 4, we're able to say that P1 is an element of P without reference to what type of thing P1 is. Sections 7 and 8. These two sections give more detail regarding the interrelations, overlaps and distinctions between objects which are parts, ingredients and elements of an object P, which may be an aggregate of M's or a class of M's. We also see that is an object of is a transitive relation. It's the results from this section that really made me decide not to translate the word mnogosch as set here, for the simple reason that the structures that we're dealing with here are so different to the kind of thing that is called a set in modern mathematics and logic. My thoughts were that, by using the word set and element, that this may lead to more confusion than is necessary. I won't be going into the details here about the distinctions, but I'll possibly make another video where I go into more detail at a later date. Thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, then please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. You can see more videos on various topics on my channel, and if you have any suggestions for topics for future videos, then please feel free to let me know and I'll try my best to put something together. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and keep an eye out for new videos being uploaded to my channel.